If you're looking to get money from venture capitalists these days, say you're the Uber of whatever it is you're doing. Interest in investing in on-demand apps has surged more than 500%, according to a new report. Joining us to talk about it is Sasha Segan. He's a lead mobile analyst at PCMagazine.com. Sasha, thanks for joining us. You know, it used to be when we talked about on-demand, it was in industrial settings, on-demand uh, production. How has that now seeped into what seems to be a real growing consumer market for these on-demand services like Uber? Well, it comes from, uh, in part, everyone having smartphones now. Uh, because everyone has smartphones, uh, people can request goods and services anywhere they go, and then the providers of the goods and services, as freelancers in this gig economy, can fulfill those requests anywhere they go. So it becomes a very efficient way to distribute demand and labor uh, via these smartphones that we all have. So we've got it, it when it comes to uh, services like a hair appointment, a nail salon appointment, hotel rooms. You know, there's an Uber for everything. But you've got to wonder, is this a little bit of a, a sort of dot-com bubble? You know, I used to joke that I missed the boat and I didn't ask people to fund GiveBirthAMoney.com back in 1999. Uh, are people just getting a little over-enthusiastic, too much money going into this? Well, that's definitely a question. Um, we're seeing so much money go into this sector so fast. And, uh, for instance, I was seeing some analysts think that Uber is now valued at 125 times earnings, which wow. seems pretty frothy. Um, so, and especially with all of these companies being private and them not uh, really exposing a lot of data to the public markets, you do have to be a little cautious and think, um, are investors just chasing this hot new thing too hard? And what do you think? Um, I think it does feel a little bubbly. I mean, there, there, is, there is a lot of reality to how smartphones have enabled these very efficient markets. Um, but Uber, for instance, there's going to be a lot of regulatory pushback, and Uber is already seeing that. Airbnb is seeing that. There may be some corrections uh, based on society coming to terms with this gig freelancer economy and saying we're going, we may put some brakes on this, and that may put some brakes in turn on these services. You also have to wonder whether, I mean, I was thinking some of these ones like for delivery, how many people are hanging around being able to deliver something to you at a moment's notice? Well, it's a surprising number of people, and uh, that has to do with the structure of our labor market and the structure of our, our economy right now, how there don't seem to be a lot of uh, very stable, decently paying middle class jobs. You know, people have talked about this for years. And so people are turning to these freelance services uh, to, to try to build up an income. And what kind of a lifestyle does that create? This could be a transformation of the way people work in our society. It really does sound disruptive. Sasha, thanks so much for joining us, and thank you for watching. I'm Bertha Coombs. Have a great day. Hey, YouTube fans. I'm Landon Downey from CNBC. Thanks so much for checking out our channel. Here you'll find videos packed with all the info that you need to be smarter about your finances. Be sure and subscribe by clicking right here, and click on all the videos around me to see CNBC's original series, Young Money, Tech Bet, Kramer's Mad Money, and all the latest from CNBC.